wanted to have Mary and Grady with us today because last week we interviewed Bob and Evelyn Blackstone, 61 years of marriage. And I said, I want to talk to other people who made it 61 years. Mary, how was he so lucky to have you for 61 years? <laughs> oh, I don't know if he's lucky or not. <laughs> he thinks he is. That's I know main he thing. is. I know he is. Now, Grady, when you proposed to her, was it a big deal, or did you just say, come on, let's go get married? Was it a big deal? I'd like to go back and tell you how I met her. Okay. Mary's father owned the only convenience store in the little community that we grew up in. Mm -hmm. And they lived above the store. And I had just finished a year in college and came home for summer break. And I, for some reason, I went up to the store to make a purchase. I don't remember for what. But I heard someone coming down the stairwell. And when I looked up, I saw the most beautiful woman ever. <laughs> oh, wow. I can see that. And she came on down, she passed me, she spoke, she, she smiled, and I certainly wasn't in any hurry to leave. <laughs> <laughs> and I made, it, I made it a point to get around and make a, get a discussion started, and we discussed topics of interest. Mm -hmm. And when I left the store that day, I said, that will be the woman that I marry. Wow. There you go. And wow. So I, the trips then were more frequent, and uh -huh. they were longer. Uh -huh. And it's pretty soon we were dating. Okay. Was she, um, gosh, in the community where you lived, it was a small community. Right. Was there a lot to choose from, or was she just that special one? Did you know her in school? Did you know her before? Had you ever seen her before that day? I was four years ahead of her. Okay. Okay. And she remembered me in school because I played basketball. Uh -huh. You probably had your eyes on him long before he knew it, didn't you? I don't know. See, I had a boyfriend already. Oh, she okay. had a boyfriend so already. So I had to quit my boyfriend for him. Uh -huh. Was it worth it, Mary? Well, I guess it was. I bet it was. I, had, I bet it was. I had was. picked this boy out when he came to our school and, and gone with him to the... Uh, Eighth, ninth, and tenth grade, and that's uh -huh. when I had to quit him to go with Gray. <laughs> <laughs> how old were you when y'all met? I was 21. So you were 16? And she was 18. Eight. Eight, 18, I guess. Okay. okay. Yeah, 18. Now, immediately, did you fall in love with him? <laughs> Well, I probably didn't right off, you know. <laughs> I don't remember that I did. <laughs> but were you absolutely taken with her? And, absolutely. And you never questioned it? Never questioned, not and from day one. And 61 years later. 61 years <laughs> later. But see, people try to make it too hard, and that's the way it's supposed to yeah, be. Yeah, yeah, that's well, exactly Well, let me put it this way. You see them and you fall in love? If I had known <laughs> then what I know now, I would still pick her out of the crowd. Isn't that something? Isn't that something? There you go. 61 years. Now, now in 61 years, um, you're an educator. That's correct. What did you teach? I taught physical science and social science, and I left with 47 years of service. Wow. I actually taught 46, but I was never sick a day in my life. Mm -hmm. And I taught many years before they started giving sick leave. Uh -huh. And when they did, it was just one day a year. Uh -huh. And over the years, I built up better than a year. And when it came time to retire, and I, like I say, I'd never missed a day due to sickness. And so I decided, well, sick leave is what it was designed for. And for some reason, I've never needed it. And I didn't feel like what, that I could go to some doctor and get some impropriety mm -hmm. way of getting maybe something done so that I could draw it. Because mm -hmm. I could, see I built those there, some of those days back there when I was making practically nothing. Mm -hmm. But I would have, in the end I would have received full pay at the salary that I was making at the time. Wow. So I decided I would just return it to the state. Amazing. And that's what I did, and they gave me one year extra on my retirement. So I taught 46 years, but I left with 47 years. Wow. Now, Mary, what did you do? Did you work outside the home? Well, we got in the chicken business, for okay. one thing, uh -huh. and so that really was uh, with the hatching eggs, what uh -huh. it was, uh -huh. and, and so. How many years did y'all do that? About 20. 20, up in 20 years. Yeah, and then after that, then I went to Clifton Precision at Peachtree and worked uh -huh. for 20 years. Uh -huh. They call it Moog or something like that today. Uh -huh. But back then, it was like Litton Industries. Uh -huh. So I worked up there 20 years, which was about 
It's about 30 or 35 miles drive each way, you know. And then in the middle of all this happiness, you had this gorgeous <laughs> daughter. That's true. You had a beautiful daughter. Was one child, you had one child. Did you ever want more children? Well, listen, I grew up during the Great Depression. Mm -hmm. And I didn't want to have more children than I could educate. Mm -hmm. And in fact, the business is, before Mary and I ever bought a car, we put money in the bank to educate her. Wow. To make sure wow. that she would have. But it was interesting. I only put $1,000. But then when I went to college, I could go for three whole months, and I would pay for room and board, books, tuition, and all for about $73. Oh my gosh. And then Today, I, that wouldn't even buy your books for one course. No. And then I, I worked. I had to work my way through. I milked cattle at the farm, and I also swept the dining hall twice a day. And for that, I got three, I got $10 a month, $30 for three months' work. So they applied that toward my tuition and all. So actually, it cost about $43 for three months. Wow. And so I, I put a... Th a thousand dollars in, but when the time came for her to go to college, I wouldn't have got her front foot into the, no, <laughs> the no, door. So. No. Now, a really? lot of people know your beautiful daughter, and um, she is drop dead gorgeous inside and out, <laughs> inside and out. Has she always been a special young lady? Yes, always. she has. Always. She's always yeah. been special. Yeah. Always. Well, and she also became a teacher, didn't she? That's correct. She? Yeah. My father was a teacher ahead of me. Okay. That's and did you encourage her, or did she just look at you and say, I want to be like my dad? No, she at first didn't think she wanted to teach, and she went in, she went off and took uh, other courses down in Atlanta. What was it? To that school of uh, art. School of Arts. Right? Art. Yeah. She's very good at art. You know what I can see her doing? <laughs> Running a salon yeah. and telling women how to feel good about yeah. themselves and how to dress and how to do their makeup. Yeah. I think she would be so cool at that. But... Finally, she decided she wanted to teach, and so she went back and took the educational courses that mm -hmm. permitted her to do so. Well, do you think that worked for her because then she married an educator? <laughs> That's true. You know, do you think there might have been a plan there? Might have. Might have been. been. <laughs> might have been. She couldn't have beat Ron. No. No, he's a no. handsome of a guy. There's no is. question about yeah. it. He is. He's perfect. He's <laughs> very good to her. He yeah. looks after her and cares for her. He sure yeah. does. Now, in 61 years, you still live on the family property? That's correct. I know there's an old home place there yeah. where your mother and dad yeah. lived. Is that right? That's right. And what, where, what's your address? Is it North Carolina, Tennessee? Where, what's your address? Well, right now, we decided we wanted to keep a Tennessee address. And so our address is P.O. Box 177, Turtletown, Tennessee. Okay. And the reason for that is quite simple. It's 25 miles to Murphy. Mm -hmm. And if you get a registered letter or anything like that, you'd have to drive 50 miles round trip. Whereas if I go to Turtletown, mm -hmm. it would only be about uh, seven or eight miles okay. round trip. That's a good strategy. Yeah. Now, you live in still a farming community, don't yes, you? Yes, we do. We, we still, I, in fact, I still farm. Mm -hmm. But, I, of course, I'm just a shadow of the man that I was before the accident. Right. But uh, I still farm. I can still drive a tractor and I mow my yard, but that's about it. I can't do any kind of work with uh, hand tools and that sort of thing. That's, that day has passed. Let's talk a little bit about 47 years of working, never missing a day's work for sickness. That's right. And then you were in the hospital for how long in intensive care? Close to two months. Okay. I met you before I met you because I was having dinner with somebody one night and they told me your story. And they told me that you were in Erlanger in critical condition, basically in a coma, and to please ask for prayer for you. So I asked for prayer for you long before I met you. Oh, what? And a lot of people said, boy, wait till you meet them. Wait till you. And, and everybody was encouraged that you would come home and you would recover. And you've recovered to about, is it 75% possibly? It depends. I don't think mentally that it's bothered me in any way, form, or fashion. But I, to give you some idea, I saw my doctor, Dr. Bell, at, I have in, in uh, Chattanooga, Tennessee, and he told me that he was there the night that I was brought in. Uh -huh. And he said he told his nurse the next day, he said, the man won't survive. He says, I've never seen anyone survive an accident and an injury like he has. And he said, when I learned that you did survive, I said to her that he'll be a vegetable. He'll wow. never be able to speak. He'll never be able to talk. He'll never be able to walk. And I had 
some crushed vertebrae back here and uh -huh. also had a spinal injury. And they told her, my wife said, that will just have to remain and stay where it is. They said, there's no way he can under, undergo that operation tonight. Uh -huh. So I was nearly a month before I woke up. Wow. And when they did, when I did wake up, they rolled me down, x-rayed my back, and they said, we don't understand. They said, every bone is in place and knitting properly. Oh my gosh. We understand. <laughs> yeah. We understand because hundreds of thousands of people were praying for you. That's true. You were on every prayer chain anywhere. You were on every, I mean, everybody was praying for you. That's true. Um, the That's accident true. that you're referring to took your young grandson's life. That's right. Um, today, every single day, as you leave your home, you are right across the street from where this happened. That's right. How do you deal with that? I'll be honest with you. It's, it's something I've not been able to deal with. Mm -hmm. uh, I have been I, to that site. People have told me that time would heal, mm -hmm. and I hope that in time it does. But right now, it hurts. Mm -hmm. I know it does. I know it does. And your young, your only grandson was named after you. That's true. He was true. named Brady. And um, we have shown photos of Brady a lot. Actually, Brady Singleton is on the calendar that I did last year. And out of everybody we've ever talked about honoring and thinking about, that was the one. That was the, there was no decision to be made. It had to be Brady Singleton. He lived a very, very blessed three years. Listen, he loved the farm. He did. I could not... Every day that was, it was, I could, the weather would permit, I had to take him out on the farm. And I had to take him up around the cattle, not just to let him see, but I had to drive through the cattle mm -hmm. and let him see them. And he knew everything about a tractor, no matter what it was. You told I, me that one yeah. night at dinner. You said Brady could go through at three years old, and he, he could, could have given me a description of how that tractor operated. Absolutely. He could crank it as well as I. And you could ask him and say, Brady, what's that? Oh, Papa, that's the, that's the alternator. Uh -huh. And he knew everything about one. Uh -huh. So I bought him a 12-volt John Deere. And he was, he was so proud of that tractor. He mm -hmm. just wore it. He'd run it dry every day on the battery, and we'd have to recharge it at night. Uh -huh. And he told me the day before he died, he said, and we had gone up in the pasture to, to see the cattle. And he said, Papa, you won't have to mow the grass this year. I'll cut it and put it in the barn for you. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. <laughs> so I was going to give him my farm mm -hmm. and all my equipment. He, he, said he owned everything I had except one old red tractor. He says, Papa, everything's mine but that. He said, I'm going to let you have that. <laughs> <laughs> well, we want, to, we want to talk a little oh, wow. bit about the fact that you, you were probably two of the most amazing grandparents in the world. Your daughter and her son were wonderful parents. And we are still looking for a child who needs a home. Another little boy, possibly, or a little girl. You could ride a little girl around oh, on I, a tractor, <laughs> couldn't you? I could love a girl just as much as yes, I love. Yes, you could. And the love of a child is something, it's, it's just, can't, it's indescribable. It is indescribable. We have put out messages on Facebook. We have put out messages everywhere we can. If somebody doesn't have the ability to take care of a child, if they're expecting, Ron and Shirley want to adopt again. Sure. They were very fortunate. God gave them one little precious little boy. And, and I said not to have ever met this child. I feel like I was with him. I've been to his grave several times. And, and when Freddie first took me up to that grave, I thought, wow, this is the most beautiful place. Now let's talk about where you laid Brady to rest. Why did you choose that church and that community? That's where I grew up. Okay. I grew up on a, a and large... And that's where he would have ended up growing up. Right. And... Well, he grew, see, I grew up on a farm, uh -huh. a 365 acre farm that is now covered by the backwaters of Hiawassee Lake. Wow. And so we were pushed out in 1937 and we came down to Liberty, North Carolina and my grandfather bought a farm there. And, but that was our home church. That was our, the cemetery where we bury. And what is the name of the church? Friendship. It's Friendship, Friendship, Friendship Baptist Church. Okay. And for people who haven't been, can we, can we give folks directions how they get to the crash site, how they get to the church? Because I think, I think anybody who ever drank and got behind a wheel needs to go to the crash site, needs to go to the cemetery, needs to look at the tribute to this little boy. Can you tell folks how to get there? If you're traveling on US 64 west out of Murphy, mm -hmm. turn on 294, and it's a roughly, I'd say, seven miles from where you turn on 294 and you'll see Friendship Baptist Church 
And you'll also see the cemetery up on the hill. Take, mm -hmm. As you turn into the church, just bear right, and it'll take you right up to the top. And when you get to the top of the hill, just look, and you'll see the word Singleton. Beautiful, beautiful and, cemetery, beautiful yeah. view. And if you're coming, of course, on 64 east, or if you're coming up 5, mm -hmm. take 68 north to the point where... <laughs> Highway 2123, that's probably the shortest road in the state of Tennessee. It's only mm -hmm. about a mile long. And it's easy to remember, 123. And that'll take you to the North Carolina, Tennessee line. And you travel there, and when you get over about five miles from the line, the road will forks, take the right across the bridge. The other takes you to Hiawassee Dam. Mm -hmm. And you stay on that road, and it'll take you right up to... Friendship Church, and you can turn left at that time and go up on the hill to find the, to find the cemetery. Mm -hmm. Mary, what was it like to have to tell Grady that Brady had passed away? I don't remember telling him. I think you remembered it, didn't you? I did. I, I remembered woke up. It. That's the strangest thing. When I, I came to, just I don't know how long I was out from the time they hit me. But I came to and I realized that Brady was in the branch. But I had a, my four-wheeler was a farm vehicle mm -hmm. and I had it heavily loaded with tools and equipment and so forth. Mm -hmm. And I knew I couldn't lift it off of him. There's no way I could possibly do it. And I hollered as loud as I could several times, but no one was in earshot. And I think myself, I've got to get out of here and get help from my grandson. And I crawled through a barbed wire fence and tore up my legs and it took him forever to heal. And as I was trying to climb up the bank, help did come. And it was my neighbor, Verlin Williamson. And, he, and I told him, I said, Verlin, I've got to get out of here and get help from my grandson. Somebody's got to help me. And he said, you've been seriously injured. He said, you're bleeding from the mouth and your ears and everything else. He said, sit still, lie still. And I said, no, I've got to get out of here and help, find help from my grandson. And then I went out. Mm -hmm. And I didn't wake up again until... I was in the emergency room at Copper Basin Hospital. I woke up for about two or three minutes, maybe a minute, and Dr. Siddiqui was with me, and I said, Dr. Siddiqui, I lost my grandson. And he, I remember, and he said, yes, we did the best we could, but we couldn't revive him. Wow. Wow. And then I went out, and I didn't wake up then for another, almost another month. Okay, <clears throat> you were in Erlanger, and, and, and truly, the doctors did not think you would make it. No, I had to have brain surgery that night. The whole community was praying for you, That's and true. and I don't think you I don't think you realized because just like me I was a newcomer to that area at the time, but people were calling me and saying please ask for prayer for them please ask for prayer for them, the prayer chain was going I'd never seen anything like it I, and I knew at that time you were a very very special man because people would talk about you and tear up when they talked about you and and what an incredible person you are now you're also involved in the tri-state electric is I've that been right on it, i've been on the board of direction for 40 years and i've been president of it for the last 33. Mm -hmm. and um this wasn't a normal family so you got an extra dose of prayer you got an extra dose of prayer and when the doctor said he couldn't believe you survived he couldn't believe you healed Emotionally, you will still heal every single day of your life. Physically, will you ever get back to... No, I, you know? I, don't, I can't get my balance back right now. That's the biggest problem. Mm -hmm. If I'm walking on level ground, I can do it so without a cane. But if I'm on unlevel ground, I have to have a cane. Mm -hmm. So I just can't get my balance. That's why I've been a stoop forward. If I were to straighten up the, and look up in the sky to see an airplane, I'd probably fall backward. Wow. I can't get my balance back. Now, what about the brain surgery? What, what did that entail? Well, I've still got a low place in my skull up there, and I've, I've got pictures shows where I was cut from here all the way back to there, oh and I don't know how many stitches it took to, to cover it up. Mm -hmm. I, Mary has had, took some I've pictures, got pictures of it. I've got pictures of it. But, uh, I can show you. Mm -hmm. I, don't I was told that me. my head swelled up as big as a half bushel tub almost. And, wow. Mm. But, wow. Mary, did you think you would celebrate 61 years of marriage with him when he was laying <laughs> no. in the hospital almost gone? I just, I, I didn't know, you know. Just like hoped it. he would make it. Yeah. What was it like for you to have to sit there without the strong man that you were used to being there? He was the strong one. Yeah. And, and there he was, and he needed your help. <laughs> well, there wasn't anything I could do for him, you know, but pray. 
Mm -hmm. And so many people did pray. That's true. And now 61 years. But she's always been there for me. Yes. There's no doubt always. in my mind. Yeah, yeah. she's always been There's there. There's no doubt me. in my mind.